Welcome. I hope you are blessed in the Lord today. Today we want to continue to talk about predestination. In this video series on unconditional election, with the last couple of videos, we've talked about the corporate nature of predestination, namely that God from before the foundation of the world determined that he would glorify his son and make him Lord of heaven and earth, and that in him he would create a, a holy church that would be made up of both Jew and Gentile believers, and that this would magnify his grace. And so today we want to jump into the individual nature of predestination. Some of the passages in scripture, when we come to them, in fact, most of them relate to God's eternal purpose in Jesus Christ and creating a body of believers of Jew and Gentile, but many of them also apply to individuals. And so we want to look at how predestination applies to individuals. So let's go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 1. We want to look at verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So those that have repented of their sins, trusted in Jesus Christ, and are walking by his Spirit, living in him, these are uh, in Jesus Christ and in heavenly places with him. Verse 4, just as he chose us, those that are in Christ, in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, that God chose a holy people that they would be his holy people and walk before him. That as it says in Second uh, Ephesians 2, verse 10, for we were, are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. So believers were created that they would walk holy and blameless before God. Going on to verse 5. He predestined us to adoption as sons to himself through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will. So this is the predestined plan for those that are walking in Jesus Christ. Not that they would simply be forgiven sinners, but that they would be adopted as God's children. So we want to ask the question, has this already taken place or is it something we're still waiting for? Firstly, it's something that has already taken place. Let's jump over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and look at verses starting in verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if through the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So this is talking about walking in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. For, verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So if we're walking in Jesus Christ, living by the Spirit of God, we are presently the children of God. So God's predestined plan for believers that they would become God's children has already taken place. Verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of slavery again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So God's plan was not only to forgive us of our sin, to make us part of his holy people and to lead us into holiness that we would live a holy and blameless lives before him, but also that we would be adopted as his, as his children, not just his holy people, but his holy family. This is the predestined plan of God for all who believe in Jesus Christ. And if we believed in Jesus Christ, we repented our sins and submitted to him, then we are in Jesus Christ and we're walking in the spirit. We have his spirit. And so we cry out, Abba, Father, we are now presently the children of God. But that's not all. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Now, this is a parallel passage with Ephesians 1, 4, and 5 because foreknew here refers to God choosing a certain people. If we look at Romans chapter 11, verse 2, it talks about the, his people whom he foreknew. And then verse 4 tells us that it, it uses the word reserved or set apart for himself, kept for himself. So this is that God uh, set apart for himself or reserved for himself a people. And what did he predestine for them? He predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Now, has this already taken place? The answer, the answer is no. Many times when we see this passage, when it talks about being conformed to Jesus Christ, we think of passages like 2 Corinthians chapter 3 that says, By the Spirit of God, we're transformed from glory to glory into the image of Jesus Christ. In other words, our character is changed day by day by the power of God's Holy Spirit. This is true. This is what it was talking about in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 
13 and 14, that we have the Spirit of God and that by the Spirit of God we're putting sin to death. We're being transformed. But this passage here in verse 29 is referring to the same thing that is talked about in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven from where also we await our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our body of humiliation so that we may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working of his power, even to subdue all things to himself. So when Jesus Christ returns, those that are waiting for him, those that are walking in the spirit of God, they are going to be transformed and be conformed to the image of his glorious body. That's why in Romans 8, 29, it says, for those whom he foreknew, he predestined destined to be conformed to the image of his son, conformed to his glorious body, so that he might be the firstborn, firstborn from the dead among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. Those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Glorified is the same word that was used back in Romans 8, verse 17. If children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In other words, we are already children of God. The spirit of God already bears witness within our spirit that we are the children of God. This has already taken place. But... If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Even though we have been made children of God, we're still waiting for some future aspect of that to be fulfilled. So in Romans 8.29, it's talking about the future aspect. We see this in Romans 8.23. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we've received the Spirit that cries out, Abba, Father, groan within ourselves while eagerly waiting for adoption. So we're waiting for adoption. So there's one sense in which we've already been adopted as God's children, and there's another sense in which we have not yet been adopted as God's children. And so right now we're in that middle phase. And it says here, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. That's why we know that in Romans 8, 29, it's referring mainly to the resurrection from the dead that will take place on the day when Jesus Christ returns and by his power transforms our lowly body to be conformed to the image of his glorious body. We will be glorified with him. Now we note in verse 17, we are now children. If indeed we suffer with him, we will be glorified with him. So this is not unconditional, but it is conditional. We must continue, as it said in verse 13, 8, 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But through the spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. So we're still required to walk in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, we've been made children, so we can walk in the spirit of God, but we must endure and suffer with him and walk to the end so that we can ultimately be conformed to the glory, to his glory glorious image on that day. So we're waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body, even though we've already been adopted and given the first fruits of the Holy Spirit. But there's more that the scripture says. If we turn to Romans or Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, it says this in verse 21, to him who overcomes. So again, we see that there is a condition on ultimately inheriting eternal life on the last day. Even though we're already children, we must endure. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also have overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So what this is saying is not merely that we are forgiven sinners and not only that we have been chosen to be part of God's holy people and that he has prepared good works that we should walk in them, that we should have a faith that works through love. Not only that, but we have been presently adopted as God's children and received the first fruits of his Holy Spirit. But also, we are waiting for, eagerly waiting for, as we press on towards the goal that God has called us towards to, heavenly, uh, to eternal life in Jesus Christ, we are pressing on towards that day when we will be resurrected from the dead and giving a, given a new body just like the resurrected body of Jesus Christ. But not only that, we have also been promised that we will inherit a kingdom, that we will reign with Jesus Christ and our Father forever and ever over his kingdom. So we need to understand that this is a great plan that God has predestined for those that walk in Jesus Christ. Not only they would be forgiven, not only would they uh, be 
involved in God's holy people if they believe in Jesus Christ and trust in him, but they would also be adopted as God's children. They would relationally be put right with God and made his children positionally. But then ultimately, they would be raised from the dead and glorified with Jesus Christ, seated with him to rule and reign forever with him. This is an amazing plan. We who were once following the devil, we who were once following our own ways, we wanted to be God. We wanted to rule our own lives. We didn't want to submit to the living God, but we wanted to submit to our own desires. He has not only forgiven us, not only forgiven us, but he's forgiven us through the blood of his son. Has not only that, but he's adopted us as his children and promised if we will continue to walk in Jesus Christ, that we will inherit eternal life, the resurrection of the dead, and we will rule and reign with him over his kingdom forever. This is a glorious plan that God has for those that believe in him. Those that are members of the body of Christ through faith and submission to Jesus Christ, we are uh, promised a great inheritance. I want us to note uh, what all of this consists of. We talked in uh, several videos ago when we were talking about total depravity, we talked about the fact that Adam, whenever he sinned, he lost some things for us in the garden. He lost our inheritance. One of the things that he lost was he caused us to be alienated from God. We were born in this world, separated from God, alienated from Christ. We did not know God, and so we walked after our own evil desires. Not only that, but Adam was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. He was separated from the Tree of Life, and so we were all born mortal outside of the Garden of Eden. Also, he was made in the image of God so that he could be the representative of God on earth, that he was to rule over all of the earth. He was God's vice regent on earth as the uh, representative of God on earth in God's kingdom. But he lost that by submitting to Satan instead of submitting to God. So he lost uh, relationship with God, he lost immortality, and he lost the kingdom of God for us. But all that God has in Jesus Christ he has planned and predestined that those that walk in him would, one, be reconciled. We would be adopted as God's children. We would be given the spirit of God where we no longer have the slavery of uh, the spirit of slavery to fear, but instead we would cry out, Abba, Father, knowing that God is our Father, that he's forgiven our sins, that he loves us and welcomes us as his children. Not alienated, but reconciled. Not only reconciled, but that we would be given eternal life, that at the on the last day, Jesus Christ would raise up those that have been waiting for him, trusting in him, walking in fellowship with him, they would be given eternal life and immortality, which we lost through Adam. Not only that, but we would be seated with Jesus Christ on his throne, ruling with him forever, not only over all the animals on earth, but over all that God has and will create, that we would be God's royal family, his holy priesthood for all eternity, we would be ruling and reigning with him. So what we lost with Adam is not comparable with what we gain in Jesus Christ. So don't worry about the struggles, the difficulties, the temptations that come your way. Keep your eye on the prize, on that heavenly calling that God God has called you with to eternal life in Jesus Christ. Persevere, trust in Jesus Christ. When you fall down, turn to Jesus Christ, go to the throne of grace, receive mercy and grace and help in time of need so that you can overcome and that you can endure to the end by his grace. He preserves you through faith. So trust in him. Keep walking in him. Don't turn back. Don't let the world get you distracted or lead you astray, but trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him all the way to the end because those that endure to the end will be saved. And that saved does not just mean forgiven and going up to heaven and floating around on clouds playing some harps, but that we will be ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ, glorified with him forever. I hope this has been helpful to you. This is the predestined plan of God for those that trust in Jesus Christ and walk in him. God bless.